Happy Thursday, everybody. It's your boy, J-Hop. I'm back again. Thirsty Thursday. Hopefully you can get out and get some adult beverages later on. I got in trouble for saying, what did I say, dad juice or something? I don't remember. Y'all picked on me for that one last week. Uh, anyways, it is Thursday, which means it's the day after Wednesday. I know how the days of the week work. Uh, and on Wednesday, Oregon landed Four-star wide receiver Cooper Perry out of Arizona. Once again, plucking the top player from the state of Arizona. Definitely under Dan Lanning, Oregon has set up shop uh, in the state of Arizona. You know, that's really no slight to Kenny Dillingham at ASU or it was Jed Fish at Arizona. Uh, but anyways, with those two programs, they're, they're really just not, you know, currently at the same level that Oregon is and the Ducks have been able to take advantage of that in kind of like a really secret, you know, state that actually ends up having some pretty good talent in it year in and year out. So uh, you get a lot of retired NFL guys that, um, you know, do retire and, and live in the Phoenix area. And there's some great schools like Saguaro and, and other uh, dynamic schools there. So uh, makes sense for the Ducks to, to poach, you know, the guys like Cooper Perry. Now I know you'll look at the ranking and see that Cooper Perry is a, a top 250 guy or, 260 or whatever he is. He's not one of the elite top 50s or even a top 100 guy, but I think you can kind of just disregard that in the fact that this is a guy Oregon wanted. This is a guy Oregon prioritized. This is not a fallback by any means. I mean, it's April. It's April. There's no reason to be taking fallbacks right now. So, uh, you know, the Ducks were able to get somebody that they really wanted. You know, Oklahoma wanted him. ASU was really hoping to keep him there. And, and, and he's a really, really good football player, very dynamic with the ball in his hands, um, kind of a secret, you know, athlete, kind of a sleeper athlete, if you will, um, just because of how he looks. So, you know, again, the Ducks are very happy to get Cooper Perry on board. I know Notre Dame was trying very early as well, but, uh, you know, faded down the stretch uh, and the Ducks were able to close. So I guess happy birthday to Dan Lanning yesterday. Here's a four star wide receiver for you on your commit list. Uh, outside of that. Not a ton. I mean, uh, the biggest, uh, the second biggest news. Again, I didn't do my sheet. I'm just go. I'm just riffing here. You guys are getting J hop on a very little caffeine, just kind of starting the day. But uh, the next biggest thing I would say is Cario Oquendo uh, opting to hit the transfer portal from the Oregon men's basketball team. Uh, you know, kind of had an up and down season last year. I think was expecting to play more, wanted to come back, uh, kind of demanding more playing time, and that wasn't necessarily offered or an option. So I think, you know, I think that's very much, very much one of those things that's best for both sides. He's going to go, you know, wherever he lands and, and, and maybe find himself a, an even better situation. And I think we can all really kind of say with what's in the transfer portal right now that, you know, Dana Altman has no shortage of options there to, to fill that role, to fill that spot. So again, no shot at Oquendo in, in any way. I think this is just a great move for both sides uh, d as far as that goes. Kind of lastly here, I, I don't really want to talk about it a lot, but it's certainly out there. This this Carlos Lachlan, this Oregon, the soft batch cookies, the being called Carlos or Coach Lock. Uh, I really just kind of think I'll offer this. I, I think that uh, – you know, not every coaching relationship is perfect, right? Sometimes you coach for a guy that you don't like, but you respect. Sometimes you coach for a guy that you really like, but isn't doing a good job. Sometimes you've got a great union of guys that get along and respect what's going on, which of course creates the best uh, coaching locker room, if you will. And, you know, I think just in terms of, of, of Dan Lanning, we very much here's what i want to say we very much see that dan's um, dna is loyalty right i mean obviously he has come out and said you know phil knight rob mullins oregon gave me my first shot i'm gonna i'm gonna reward them with that and be loyal and i'm not out here putting my name out here for other jobs trying to get a raise every year uh because that can really put a strain on any relationship whether it's coach to coach or coach to athletic director or whatever the case might be. So I think we very much see his DNA is that, Hey, look, I'm, I'm loyal to Oregon. They gave me my shot. I'm going to, I want to be here. And I, I don't, I, I think that, you know, we, we saw coach Lachlan's name a lot with 
other coaching jobs out there. And, and whether that's, you know, because he's done a good job, whether he's got his agent putting his hat in the ring, you know, I think that maybe there was a little bit less of a loyalty there. And I think that those two different personalities didn't jive. I will say this, if you're coach Lachlan, and maybe he watches this, I ser- seriously doubt it. If you're trying to move up in the coaching ranks, if you're trying to continue to progress your career, I, I don't think he took a step back by going to Ohio State at all. It's a tremendous program. Um, but I do think the after effects here, some of some of the the stuff on social media, some of the stuff we saw uh, in the press conference is not a good look. It's not a good way to progress your career because other coaches see that. Other other head coaches or offensive coordinators, whatever the case might be, people that you're going to interview with or for uh, down the line, they see that and, and no coach, okay, no coach in the country, no head coach wants to bring in a potential cancer into their player locker room or their coach locker room. Um, so hopefully, maybe this is the end of it. Maybe the drama's done. Uh, maybe Coach Lachlan will learn um, a bit of a lesson there and move forward. Uh, I, I don't think these two have a major dislike for each other, but it certainly seems that some uh, you know feathers were ruffled, if you will pardon the pun. It was actually really good. I'm not going to lie. Um, that's all for now. A few visitors on campus. There won't be a lot of visitors coming to town this weekend because um, there's a lot going on. Of course, there's practice on Saturday for, for Oregon football. Additionally, uh, is the coaches clinic this weekend. And of course, that means Urban Meyer is coming to town, which is pretty cool. I know some of the coaches that are currently on staff are excited for that. I think some of the players will be excited to have him around. Um, love him, hate him, respect him, don't, whatever you want to say about Urban. Uh, he's he's done it at a high level. <laughs> he's won championships. So uh, there's no doubt the man can coach the game of football. So uh, pretty cool to have him and others on campus this weekend. As such, won't be a big visit weekend. That's all for me from today. It's Thirsty Thursday. I'm going to get upstairs and get to work, and then hopefully I can find an adult beverage somewhere of my choosing. <laughs>